Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain I Am Wrath. This movie tells the story of a former CIA operative who opens a can of brutal vengeance on the thugs who murdered his wife, and the corrupt cops who are protecting them. He and his former partner, then find a network of corruption at very high level and they decide to eliminate the problem. Can they avenge the death of his wife, and bring all involved to justice? Let's find out in I Am Wrath. I Am Wrath begins in the city of Columbus, Ohio, where there is an unprecedented spike in criminal cases in the city, due to the emergence of gangsters and thugs who create chaos, where they do not hesitate to carry out various criminal acts, and acts of violence against local residents. As there has been no significant reduction in crime rates for some time, an elected governor, John Messerf, stated at a press conference that he will work to reduce crime rates in the city, and within four years, people will feel peace and harmony again secured in their beloved city, without worrying about the appearance of criminals who will disturb the city's peace. On the other hand, a woman named Vivian Hill, headed to the airport to pick up her husband, Stanley Hill, who had just returned from California after attending a job interview to manage a factory. When they were in the airport parking lot and were about to get into the car, they noticed one of tires is flat. Before Stanley can fix it, a man approaches and asks them for money. Stanley politely declines, but another man sneaks up on Stanley's backside, electrocutes him and then knocking him out. The man who was asking for money, named Charlie, then stabs Vivian to death and takes the woman's purse, while Stanley lies helpless on the ground, seeing his wife dead and the killer fleeing from there. Stanley immediately reported the incident to the police and the case was immediately handled by Detective Gibson and Detective Walker, where the two men promised to find the culprit who killed Vivian and asked Stanley to go home to calm down. After Vivian's funeral, which was also attended by the governor of Messerf because Vivian worked for the man, Stanley, unable to contain his deep sorrow over the death of his wife, decided to go straight home. Long story short, a few days after investigating the incident that killed Vivian Hill, Detective Gibson managed to catch several men according to the characteristics that Stanley mentioned, who could be suspects in the murder. Detective Gibson then asks Stanley to identify one of the men and pinpoint who killed his wife. Stanley manages to identify Charlie as the man who killed his wife, thanks to a very distinctive tattoo on the man's face. But when he tells Detective Gibson, the corrupt cop just frees Charlie, and then threatens Stanley to make him a suspect in his wife's murder. Suddenly Stanley was filled with anger because of the very disappointing performance of the police, and did not even hesitate to threaten the victims and let the real perpetrators walk away free. Stanley then returns home with a deep sense of disappointment while still struggles with his desperation. So angry, that he even threw a Bible across the room, which opens to the passage in Jeremiah 6:11, I am filled with the wrath of the Lord. Inspired by the Bible verse, Stanley now calls his name Wrath, and learns that his wife's killer was Charlie Laws. Stanley briefly heads to his closet, where he intends to take something hidden behind his wardrobe. But Stanley later abandoned this intention because he was still unsure about what action he would take to avenge his wife's death. Stanley then started stalking Charlie, and when he saw Charlie who seemed to be having fun with his gang on the side of the road, an angry Stanley then turned around his car, returned home, and rushed to his room. Without thinking, Stanley then smashed the wall behind the cupboard and took a suitcase from there. The case has several passports, foreign currencies, and several weapons. Stanley then contacts a man named Dennis, his friend from Special Forces, because Stanley was a highly trained Special Forces member. Stanley then asked Dennis to find information about Charlie and his crew. Because the police are unreliable, Stanley decides to avenge his wife's death in his own way and asks Dennis to help him. Dennis manages to track down one of Charlie's men and alert Stanley where they hatch a plan to ambush the man at a bar. Stanley pretends to be a visitor at the bar to spy on Charlie's crew, but his whereabouts were discovered by the man who immediately fled outside the bar. When Stanley chases after him, thinking the man has fled, he appears behind Stanley and points a gun at him. But the man doesn't know that Stanley is a former member of the Special Forces, so he can easily turn things around, where Stanley is now threatening the man to reveal the location of Charlie's whereabouts. Dennis then appeared to secure the situation, as the man lay dying from being tortured by Stanley, he hints that Vivian's murder was more than just a robbery. Because the man did not want to open his mouth further and tell the whereabouts of Charlie, Stanley and Dennis finally killed the man. However, unbeknownst to Stanley and Dennis, it turned out that one of Charlie's crew knew what they were doing and took a photo of it secretly. The man immediately reported the incident to his boss, who was none other than a crime lord who was the mastermind behind all the crimes that occurred in the city, nicknamed Lemmy K. After learning that one of his henchmen has been killed, Lemmy orders his men to find Charlie and kill the two men in the photo who killed his men. Turns to Stanley and Dennis who return to their secret base, 
which is located in the basement of Dennis's barbershop to rework their next plan. Stanley seems impressed with what Dennis has down there, where it turns out that he still has the weapons and equipment they used when they were in the Special Forces. Elsewhere, Lemmy Kay apparently called Detective Gibson and Detective Walker to meet him because someone killed his men, while the police should have been assigned to protect Lemmy Kay and his men so that their business runs smoothly. Lemmy Kay, who was still annoyed, then tried to remind the police about how they had to work together when Governor's son, who was on a drug party, accidentally killed his girlfriend. The governor then bribed Detective Gibson and his partner to work with Lemmy Kay in order to cover up the crimes that his son had committed. Not only that, it turns out that Vivian Hill's murder was not just an ordinary robbery, but was ordered by the governor himself. Because Vivian, who worked for him, already knew that Governor Messerf had cheated on the construction of a pipeline in the city, and Vivian was killed so as not to reveal the fraud to the public. On the other hand, Stanley manages to track down Lars, one of the men involved in Vivian's murder. Stanley in disguise, then visits Lars at a tattoo parlor. After painting a tattoo that says I am wrath on Stanley's back, Lars realizes that Stanley is the husband of the woman they killed. Lars then points a gun at Stanley. But Stanley can easily grab the gun and attack Lars back, threatening the man to reveal Charlie's whereabouts. Reluctant to open his mouth, Stanley kills the man and takes a bag full of cash and drugs. At the same time, Charlie and some of his crew manage to find the whereabouts of Dennis and attack him at his barbershop. But Dennis was able to finish off Charlie's henchmen with the fighting skills of a trained former Special Forces member, though Charlie managed to escape in the end. One night, Stanley recalled fond memories with his wife who had always been faithful to accompany him, even when he did not have a permanent job after retiring from the Special Forces. Vivian was always by his side. Therefore, Stanley was determined to avenge the death of his wife at any cost. On the other hand, Charlie, knowing that several of his men had been killed, then tried to threaten Stanley by shooting at Stanley's daughter, Abby's car, where in the incident, Abby's husband was seriously injured. Abby immediately blames Stanley for what has happened to her husband, because his father is now dealing with gangsters who will endanger the safety of Abby and her family. After the attack on Abby and her family, Stanley and Dennis then devise a plan to lure Charlie into using the bag containing the money and drugs and meet the man at a nightclub. After killing all of Charlie's men, Stanley then cornered the man. Before being killed, Charlie finally confesses to Stanley that he was only ordered by his boss, namely Lemmy Kay, to kill Vivian Hill. Because Lemmy Kay thinks that Vivian interfered too much about all the dirty business run by Lemmy Kay and the crimes that had been committed by him and his men, even though they were always impervious to the law. Meanwhile elsewhere, Lemmy Kay and his men manage to track down Abby and her little son and take them hostage. But not long after, Stanley and Dennis arrive there and kill all of Lemmy Kay's men. When Stanley confronts Lemmy Kay and tells him not to hurt his family, on the other hand, Dennis who is already at the place, shoots Lemmy Kay from a distance, allowing Stanley to attack the man, beat him and force him to reveal the reason why he killed his wife. Lemmy Kay then reveals that he ordered his men to kill Vivian Hill on orders from Governor Messerve, who is none other than Vivian's boss who doesn't want evidence of his cheating and involvement with the city's gangsters to be exposed to the public. Before Lemmy Kay can reveal more about the governor's ugliness, Detective Gibson appears and shoots Lemmy Kay dead. Detective Walker then pointed a gun at Stanley, but Dennis also appeared at the right time and immediately incapacitated the man. Under Stanley's threat, Detective Gibson then explained that Lemmy Kay had been blackmailing the governor with a video recording of the crimes committed by the governor's son. So Governor Messer asked the police to cooperate with Lemmy Kay to cover up his son's disgrace. And in return, the police were forbidden to put Lemmy and all his men in prison, despite having committed a series of crimes that endangered many people. As part of the deal, Lemmy agrees to do some dirty work on the governor's orders, such as killing Vivian Hill. After listening to the explanation, Stanley then forced Detective Gibson to take him to the governor's house. Arriving there, Stanley then beat the man unconscious, then opened the fuel tank cover valve and aimed the lighter which was lit there, so that the car exploded and killed Detective Gibson in it, while Detective Walker who had been locked in the trunk car, barely escaped before the explosion occurred. Stanley manages to infiltrate the governor's house and kill the guards, until finally going head to head with Governor Messerf, who admits what he's done but plans to murder Stanley to complete the cover-up. After fighting quite fiercely, Stanley was finally able to turn things around by stabbing the governor, killing him. At the same time, the police arrive at Governor Messer's residence and force Stanley to surrender himself at gunpoint by snipers, who are ready to shoot Stanley down if the man refuses to surrender. Seeing this, Stanley instead raised his gun, so the sniper shot him. Fortunately, Stanley was wearing a bulletproof vest so that his life could still be saved and was immediately rushed to the hospital for medical treatment. After what happened to her father, Abby then finds out that she will not be able to see her father again, 
because he will soon be transferred to another place to undergo trial for all the actions he took to avenge her mother's death. Therefore, Abby was desperate to barge into Stanley's treatment room in order to meet her father and give her a farewell hug, and say that she loves her father very much. After that, it was seen that the policemen who stood guard in front of Stanley's treatment room were changing shifts, and Detective Walker was the policeman who would be in charge of guarding Stanley's treatment room. While the other cops are off guard, Detective Walker sneaks into Stanley's treatment room to kill him. However, Abby slipped Stanley a gun during their hug, and he kills Detective Walker as Dennis enters the room to help him escape. With Abby who receives a postcard from Sao Paulo, Brazil, assuring her that Stanley is doing fine. The film ends, 